Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, traders around the globe. We from Admiral Markets say welcome to our real time daily trading idea webinar. In this webinar, we would like to screen the markets, show you some interesting trading setups, and for sure answering here your questions. But first of all, here's our risk disclaimer. So please be aware that Forex and CFDs are complex instruments. Um, you trade here with a leverage, and um, the losses can exceed your deposit. So and then please be aware that all we are showing and presenting here today is just a personal opinion of our traders and not an advice for investing. So here's the picture from me. My name is Tim Temp. I'm account manager here from uh, Germany, based in Berlin. So, and we have the pleasure here today with Paul. He will join us in a couple of moments here and let us know what his view on the markets is. And here we have a quick overview of some of our offerings here. For example, our best seller index 30. We offer it with a typical fixed bet of only 0 0.8 point during the main trading hours. These and other products you can trade without any commission here. So, and we are an international broker, so uh, we have global license and we can make um, special offers to you. For more uh, details, feel free to contact our customer service. So here we have a picture from Paul. I say good morning to you, Paul. Now it's your turn. I share the screen with you and you can start. Good morning, uh, Tim. Good morning, traders. Uh, I hope you're all well. Here we are, Tuesday, 5th of March, 2019. Uh, apologies, I still have this little, uh, the last element of this uh, cold or flu that I've had. So. Uh, if I sound a little hoarse, I yeah, I do apologise. But uh, nevertheless, that's uh, we're still here to to look at and talk about uh, markets. We've uh, we've had uh, an interesting uh, session yesterday, which I'm going to touch upon uh, in a moment. We've also got quite a few interesting pieces coming out uh, today and later this week that will give us uh, something to look at and uh, talk about. Um, I think in the UK here, we've just had the uh, UK service PMI this morning, which was um, which we were forecast for around about 49.950, but actually, you know, we uh, hit 51.3. So that will be uh, good numbers. We'll, we'll see what, if any, impact that has uh, on sterling. We'll have a look at that in the moment. Um, we've already had the uh, Aussie uh, cash rate number that that's, that stayed the same at about 150. Uh, and then this afternoon, we have uh, in the US, we've got non-manufacturing uh, ISM numbers, and um, then around about half three we've got mr carney sort of uh, governor of the bank of england he's going to be talking to the uh, house of lords so of course people will be uh, wanting to hear what he has to say and what if any impact that will have upon uh, uk markets um then uh, this evening we've got uh, mr uh, low governor low in fact the uh, uh, the sort of governor of the royal bank of australia he's speaking this evening and uh, people will be interested to hear what he has to say then um, tomorrow we've got Australian GDP, we've got uh, the Canadian interest rate decision uh, tomorrow, we're expecting no change. Thursday we've got the ECB in the Eurozone uh, interest rate uh, decision once again. We're not really expecting any change, but people will be interested to hear what Mr Draghi has to, uh, to, to say for himself. Uh, and then on Friday we've got the, uh, the big ones of the Canadian and the US uh, employment numbers. So, um, you know, lots going on. It's always like the sort of first major full week of the uh, of the month. There's always lots of uh, news to be uh, coming out for us to digest and for us to inject a little bit of uh, volatility into markets. But um, today, what I wanted to start with was actually just having a look at some of the major indices. So uh, we had a rather interesting session uh, yesterday where we had uh, a quite considerable sort of uh, um, uh, bearish uh, sessions. We had bearish uh, closes on the uh, the both the major American set, um, uh, indices, which of course uh, sort of uh, uh, followed through with uh, most of the other global indices. We'll have a little bit of a, a look at that in uh, in greater depth and what, what we can see here. Is here is the uh, Admiral Markets uh, uh, sort of MT4 uh, MetaTrader platform. Uh, I have a profile that's just set up for uh, for indices here, okay. Uh, and like all of the uh, other profiles I have, they're just there to give me a little bit of a quick snapshot. And uh, what I have here is set up on the on the top left. I have the the Dow Jones, the the S and P 500, the the Nasdaq, and the uh, Australian index the ASX. On the bottom left here, I have uh, the uh, Japanese uh, Nikkei. Followed by the uh, the Chinese A50, the the DAX, uh, and then bottom right we have the uh, the FTSE. And uh, you know we've we've talked about how over the uh, the last sort of uh, 
let's say the last sort of two months or so, we've actually had you know pretty strong uh, upward grind by uh, most of the major indices. But then yesterday, and I think the Dow probably shows it the better. We had you know a really rather bearish uh, day here on the uh, on the Dow. This is the, the daily chart. And um, for those of you who are uh, new to trading, just joining us for the first time, um, my charts have got green bullish, red bearish candles, uh, blue 20 simple moving average, red 50 simple moving average, and a green 200 period moving average. Uh, I also have fractals on here as well. And um, if you want to know more about my simple chart setup, then uh, by all means go to the uh, Admiral Markets uh, uh, YouTube channel, where you'll find the Mastering the Four M's of Trading webinar series there that I explain how we do our uh, analysis and how I uh, uh, how my charts are set up and how we use them. But what we're really looking at here is yesterday's uh, chart pattern here. Okay, the the, the Dow it's a it's a really rather bearish uh, bearish engulfing. Okay, after the longer uh, uptrend, all right. I'd like to say I'd have been very, quite uh, quite interested if we had a close beneath the 20 period moving average, but at the moment it's still acting as a bit of dynamic support. But you know we have a bit of a, a scruffy double top there. Okay, you know a bit of a scruffy double top with a second point being a you know a, a bearish engulfing. So it starts to get me interested in terms of a possibility of a uh, a small just a short uh, sort of mean reversion trade. And if I go down to the the four hour chart, okay, you, hopefully now you can see that you know we had. You know, last week we had a a, you know, a nice push to a, a you know a new sort of uh, what would have been a new high for uh, for the year for 2019, uh, but then actually you can see what happened yesterday. We you know we gapped up on the open, went sideways, and then we had this you know real collapse there. Okay. And, that gave us yesterday. I think yesterday was the uh, the sort of the, the most uh, bearish close, or the, you know the biggest down day of the year so far. Now, now, admittedly, you know we're only on you know we're only on fourth of March. So we've had probably about forty five to fifty trading days maximum, but nevertheless, it was still the uh, the sort of uh, uh, the biggest down day of the year so far. And you can see that yourself there on that four hour candle, complete bearish engulfing there. So what I'm starting to be interested in as well, then, you know, I'm going to be interested to see as well, you know, do we get a little bit of a, uh, a retrace? And in particular, um, you know, what we've done in the past is just looking at, I'm just going to draw in here, just start to get kind of interested here around about this kind of where the 50 to 62% pullback is on the, uh, on the chart. I'm just going to just, let's, uh, just change that a little bit. Draw in so you can see a little bit clearer, perhaps. Um, what we can look at is in that particular area, I'm going to be, uh, just looking, keeping an eye on over the today's session, okay, just to see what does the price action do there. If I start to get bearish price action or bearish rejection candles there, so maybe some pin bars, maybe smaller sort of engulfing candles, maybe we get maybe uh, an evening star, maybe as a three bar reversal, all, all setups that we've covered in the Mastering the Four M's of Trading webinars. Well, then I'd be interested in treat to sort of take a, a short position, okay, on a, on a sort of a, a longer term, um, not a longer term, a shorter term swing position, sort of looking to establish a position around there, okay, based on bearish price action with uh, a, a, you know, an initial target of uh, around about 25, 480. That's what I'd be looking at, you know, first part, then down towards the sort of 25 to 25, 300 area, okay, which is also where the sort of four hour, 200 period moving average is around. And so I'll be looking at that for uh, for this afternoon session. Just be keeping an eye on. I'm just going to be effectively just going to be stalking that area there at the moment. Okay, just uh, that area there. What we're talking around about sort of 25 uh, 25 900 to about 25 960. Just I'm just going to be keeping an eye on that area. Okay, there's nothing for me to do there at the moment. I'll just you know add that to my watch list as the day goes on. I'll just be keeping an eye on it and just seeing well, okay, how does price react within that zone? Okay, and if I get bearish rejections. I'll be looking to sort of uh, take a, uh, uh, a shift to the uh, to the side. So um, I'm hoping that you can uh, still all see those uh, the slides. Okay, okay. I hope you can still see the uh, the charts. It should be uh, should be all okay for you to, um, uh, to see presently. And uh, um, you know we'll uh, have a quick look at some of the other uh, indices that we've got there. So um, that was the, uh, the that was the Dow. Um, I just wanted to draw your attention to the uh, the sort of China A50, okay? And uh, in terms of what we have here, if I go up to the weekly chart, you know, we've not really talked about it for uh, for too long, okay? We've uh, not talked about it for for too long, but what we have, uh, you know, we talked about last year was that we thought, you know, was there a bit of a, a descending triangle building, okay? Here with that sort of 10750 sort of zone and level we talked about. 
And actually what we can see is, you know, as, as uh, people were worried about the uh, threat of a US-China trade war, we see price dipped beneath it. And then we had this uh, really nice bullish key reversal pattern here on the weekly chart at the end of the year. And what you can see there is, you know, effectively just, you know, a strong rally back in the Chinese stock market. Last week, we had a really, really strong week, okay, really strong week, okay, and a lot of that was down to the uh, positive comments that we heard from uh, from both uh, uh, Mr. Trump and President Xi about the uh, the likelihood of a good Chinese trade deal. You know, and invariably, you know, once price starts going on that, once price going vertical, it goes a bit parabolic, that's probably the time for people to start taking a little bit of, uh, a little bit of profit, and that's what we've seen on the daily chart, okay, we had a little bit of a rejection candle there, okay, at the uh, end of uh, last week, but, you know, nevertheless, we can see that that strength is there based upon the uh, the people thinking that, you know, there is uh, there will be a, a US-China uh, um, trade deal, and with that, that, you know, that has had an impact on the uh, Chinese stock market, which was, as you can as we just saw there, was a little bit worrisome. And, and we're going to play into that in a moment when we just take a look at one or two of the uh, other opportunities that are uh, that are coming our way. If we look at the uh, the DAX as well, the DAX is a, is a very popular trading instrument here on our Admo markets. And uh, what we can see here is that, um, you know, hopefully you can, uh, what we can see is that uh, the charts there just showing us that, uh, um, you know, we had, you know, once again, that daily move up, very, very nice, strong, but here we had yesterday on the daily chart, we had a, uh, you know, a real kind of, you know, what we call a, a momentum reversal candle, namely that we pushed to new highs, but we closed, okay, we closed beneath the close of yesterday. We also closed beneath the sort of 50% of the move yesterday, so we, and we're closing down towards the lows. It's, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a bearish, bit of a bearish signal, and not unlike the, uh, the Dow trade, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this just to see if there is an opportunity for a sort of a, a quick shorter term uh, trade for us onto the edge, uh, the downside. So let's have a quick look at that uh, at the moment. So if I go down to the uh, the four hour chart here, hoping that uh, <coughs> hoping that you can uh, see that, hoping it's coming through for you. So what you know, actually, if we just look what last week, if you remember last week's trade, you know, we had a trade on the DAX here. Okay, we were buying here around about 464. We were very fortunate. We were just nicked in, and then price rallied up to its uh, target. So you know, we had a nice little trade there. Okay, as as price moved its way, we did we did fall back a bit, but you know, once again, we had a bullish rejection candle before we've moved up. Uh, you know, what we've seen here is you know we gapped up again, uh, and then invariably, you know, we had a uh, you know a little bit of a, a reversal, and, and this is what I'm looking at here. Okay, remember what I was saying? It's just a little bit like the the Dow trade. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how does the market react to that today. And I'm, if I go down to the four hour chart. Okay, this is what I've been looking at, and uh, I have a trade already set in. I think it might have just uh, I'm thinking it might have just actually just uh, triggered. I was looking as of once again that kind of 50 to 62 uh, area that's um, kind of curious about in terms of the uh, you know how does the price react when it gets there and if we go down to the uh, uh, to the chart and I think I might my trade might have just been uh, triggered here what I was intrigued was that um, you know what you can see here this is the 15 minute chart the price there it's you know it's, it's you know it's, there's a bit of consolidation going on there price is uh, really having a little bit of a uh, little bit of a battle there a little bit of a, a little bit of a fight okay you can uh, see there and uh, you know what we're going to look at if I go down to the five minute chart, what I've had here is you know I, I have uh, you know a trade order here. It hasn't actually just triggered. It's about to. I was looking at it as a double top, but actually it's 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 become a triple top there. So you know I'm looking to be uh, short there around about eleven five nine nine, just beneath the six hundred area. My stop loss is going to be uh, six one six, and uh, my target is eleven five six seven. So I'm going to be risking about uh, 17 ticks for uh, 32 ticks of possible uh, profit gives me about just under two about 1.9 uh, r on my uh, on my trade so i think that's just about to uh, i think that's just about to get triggered on my uh, on my uh, uh, own account there i'll just draw it in here so have it so i'll be interested as i said you know as i said i was curious to see how price reacts when it gets back up to that area of the sort of uh, 50 uh, sort of 50 to 62 percent retrace of uh, yesterday's uh, of yesterday's move and there we go, just drawing that in where my uh, uh, entry order is, where my uh, stop loss is. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I'm just uh, as curious to see, you know, how does price, how does price react when it gets there? And we can see that 
prices there is sort of putting in a uh, you know put a bearish price action and there we go looks like um, looks like we've just been uh, triggered in there you know if you'd have been sharper you might have been looking at a bit of an earlier entry if you're watching this quite aggressively and there's so you know where we get the triple top but you know we'll just uh, that trade is on we'll just uh, see how that um, particularly uh, plays out i'll be interested to see how it reacts to the uh, to the 50 period moving average then this kind of next day around about 580 and i'll just be keeping an eye on that uh, as we uh, as we go so we've got a few minutes uh, left and uh, i know some people wanted us to have a look at uh, pound against dollar yet we we're definitely going to have a little switch across to that Let's have a, a quick look at that, and we'll uh, just leave that DAX trade to do what it uh, what it needs to uh, to do. So, um, it just as my uh, MetaTrader uh, updates, um, uh, d my uh, Dow. Okay, it's my Dow, my d dollar index. My apologies, it's the uh, it's the flu that's uh, making me uh, uh, my words uh, sort of uh, be a little bit uh, misplacing my words. But here we are, dollar index weekly chart. Remember last week, okay, last couple of weeks we've been short on that, all right? Um, at the end of last week, uh, in the middle of last week, I ended, I just ended up stepping aside from that for the moment, simply because this was one of my inflection points. Here we had, and then you know, once I had, once again, I had, you know, sort of bullish rejection candles followed by a bullish key reverse. So I was able to step aside at 96. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I generated about 90 pips of profit from that, which gave me about two and a half R on my uh, trade. So hoping to get down to 95 and it might do it. I'm going to be interested to see how does price react when it's back up here again. Do we get a bearish rejections there? In which case I might sort of just look to be once again a seller of, uh, of the dollar. If I look at Euro uh, uh, dollar, okay, as an idea here, you know, I've talked about this for the last few weeks. It's just getting squeezed, isn't it? Euro dollar's getting squeezed there. The 20 period moving average, right? The power of the 20 period moving average. You can find out about that on the Mastering the 4Ms trading webinar. We've got that above the 20 period moving average above, and then the 200 period moving average and that 113 level underneath. And you can just see there yourself, price is getting squeezed there, okay? Price is getting squeezed. And, and invariably, there'll be something that happens. Maybe it's something that Draghi says. Maybe it's something in the uh, American jobs numbers. Or you maybe something completely separate you know, that we don't know about that will maybe give it the something that will, uh, will fire it off. If we look at, uh, once again, in pound against dollar, okay, I know somebody was asking about have us having a look at that. Once again, you know, we've, we had this, you know, we had a double bottom here and, and price rallied up. Let's put the uh, first one. And uh, we talked a couple of weeks ago about how, you know, once again, that 20 period moving average had acted as nice now, dynamic support and price had rallied up, okay, back up in, back up into the uh, 132 areas. But over the last week or so, what we've seen is, you know, a few of the comments by uh, Mrs. May, all right, has caused a little bit of, a uh, little bit of anguish in terms of, firstly, when she talked about, you know, perhaps delaying Brexit, this is what we've seen over the last week, right? But then, of course, there's been more commentary about, you know, what she's actually trying to achieve and, as we tick down to her vote next week, which is I think next Tuesday and Wednesday, um, then and Barry, we're going to see some volatility in that. So, you know, uh, my view would be at the moment on pan against dollar is, you know, I'd, I'd be a little bit flat at the moment because I'm just waiting to see, you know, what happens over the next couple of days. If you've been long, you know, right, on the pan against the dollar, well done, well done. But I think, you know, we're going to sort of see maybe a little bit of people getting a little bit quiet, a little bit nervous and edgy as they as they sort of uh, run the clock down towards that vote um, next week. And I'll just uh, finish off very quickly with dollar against CAD and gold. All right, dollar against CAD. We talked about it a couple of weeks. Talked about you know how it was just you know coiling up. All right, you've seen euro dollar has been coiling up. We saw sort of dollar Swiss was coiling up a couple of weeks ago. Dollar yen had a strong movement. If we look at this dollar CAD, okay, we've had we've been coiled up and we've broken out now. My own view is that part of this is to do with maybe the political situation in Canada. Mr. Trudeau's found himself in a little bit of a, a vat of uh, boiling oil, and it, there's, there's talk that he actually might be done as uh, Prime Minister of Canada. Um, if you can, you can read the news about that. But of course, that has an impact on uh, the view of uh, Canada and the Canadian economy, and also the view of, uh, you know, of, uh, of the U.S. And so, invariably, we've had uh, a lot of strength there in the U.S. dollar and a bit of weakness in the Canadian dollar, right? And uh, once again, you know, maybe there's an element of that as we've seen with the Chinese index, okay, and you know, a little bit of uh, with the, the overall trend has been, you know, that uh, people think that trade deal is done, and that has also had a knock-on impact on gold. Just to finish off very quickly, gold has been a great uptrend here on the weekly chart, but we got up to uh, an area you know, where we'd be looking to be bearish. If you remember last week, we you know we we talked about shorting gold. We wanted to be short on uh, gold, but we were trading on very 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 small time frames actually you know we had a you know we were we were right again okay, in terms of our uh, trade idea we wanted to be short as the uh, as the coil sort of uh, skewed but actually i think we just got washed out a little bit on our very aggressive trade 
but then there were opportunities the next day for us to establish on the sort of the Wednesday and the Thursday to re-establish shorts and you know we had, we've actually had a very nice run there on uh, gold okay as, as, as the sort of uh, let's say as the sort of uh, um, tensions over the, the tariffs and the uh, trade war sort of subside then people have sort of stepped away from uh, gold so uh, there you go tim there's a, a quick run through i hope that uh, found that uh, useful and interesting to people as always i wish you the very best success in this uh, interesting trading week uh, and i look forward to speaking to you in a week's time okay paul yeah all questions and uh which markets here are done so thank you very much for your showing us what's going on in the markets uh thank you so also to our, our listeners here today uh tomorrow we are back at the same time if you like with a new trader this week so uh, for the moment i wish you all a good day nice trades and see you bye bye